we received an appalling level of customer service and that has been admitted. And a lot of people are leaving and they have no idea, they're not, you know, they have no knowledge of the fact that these people are leaving because they leave quietly. So they don't get that feedback of why they've left. This is a problem that it feels like eBay is maybe unaware of and it's damaging, it's incredibly damaging. I've had lots of personal messages, private messages from people who abandoned eBay for similar experiences. She said, and I quote, that's very disappointing to hear and this is not being taken lightly. Hello. Hello. As promised, uh, this is an update on our ordeal with eBay. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it, but if not, quickly, um, we had to verify our business details, uh, who we are and how we run our business with eBay. Uh, this took two weeks during which eBay restricted our ability to take our money. They held our money for two weeks. Yeah. So if you haven't seen that video and you don't know what this is all about, then it's a couple of videos ago. You can go back on our channel and... Yeah, and go, and watch, go and watch that now and then you'll get some context. So we were promised a follow-up call to answer the many questions we had about what happened. The lady that called us uh, works out of Ireland and she kind of heads up their customer service experience. I think team leader for escalations within customer service. So she rang to chat with us um, and to hear what we had to say and hopefully answer our questions. She very early on in the call apologised on behalf of eBay, which is nice and we do appreciate that, but it's not really what we want here. We want answers. We are worried if this happens again. We know people who follow us and watch that first video are very worried that this could happen to them. So yes, she did apologise. She said she totally understood our frustration because she watched the video. And she said it was very clear and painful to see our frustration in that. So we're pleased that that came across at least. I don't know how it could not have done because well, we were just filming in, in real time and it was just It was a good document. It was a good document to give you an, an idea of, remember this went on for two weeks and the video was only half hour or 40 minutes long. Anyway, anyway, right. The first thing we wanted to know and the first question we had really was what triggered this whole thing? because we were never really told that. This whole thing started because we, there was a problem with our address on eBay and we wanted to update our address because it was showing wrong, essentially. Essentially, without going into great yeah. detail. Um, so we updated that. In short, it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All your fault. Um, but this shouldn't be a problem. Many times you will have to update your de details. If you move house, for example, which we did a year or so ago, and we didn't have any of these issues, and we had the same paperwork, who knows. But um, it was confirmed that updating our address triggered a verification because they wanted to verify our address, okay? So at this point, I, I brought up, okay, so, we have two-step verification on our account. So they can send my phone a code and then send an email asking for the code so they know they're talking to me. At which point I asked, why isn't that enough? If we've updated our address and you can prove that it is us and, and that's us that's done it, is that not enough? And apparently it isn't. At that point, we have to go through a full business verification and provide paperwork to back up the address. She did say that the two-step verification issue was, was a fair point. Why couldn't they have used that to verify they were talking to us and therefore what we said was correct? Mm. But we then got into the whole verification procedure and then it has to be supported with documentation. Fine. That's when the verification procedure began. We went on to ask, why, about two weeks into this, were we categorically told the problem was our names were different on some of the paperwork to what eBay had. So we had to provide paperwork with our full names on. That was the sticking point we were told. And we went then through, jumped through all the hoops to get letters for the HMRC with our full names on. Yeah, and spent a long time on the phone because if anybody knows, if anyone's tried to phone HMRC, you're on hold for about an hour. 
listening to the same little bit of music they've had for years, by, by the way. Anyway, it was we're still kind of in the dark about this because uh, this lovely lady from Ireland said that it was an address issue and our address didn't yeah. match. She said that the address on, that they had on eBay didn't match with the address that I provided. On HMRC, you have to put in a postcode and it automatically generates an address. And it doesn't have Norfolk on it, which is our county. But on eBay, obviously, we put our full address on it, including the county Norfolk. But any human being can surely see, maybe that's the point, human being, can see these are the same address. It just is missing the county, but it's still the same address. But we have heard directly from this lady what some of the issues are that caused this to drag on for two weeks. So I'm going to share some of what was said and, and, and quote some of what this lady said to us about the, the, the wider issues. The, the, the nitty gritty kind of specifics of ours are still a confusion to us. If, if we're perfectly honest. So when we asked, why did this go on for two weeks? Why were we told conflicting information at several points? Why did everybody we spoke to ask us to verify our company number? When everybody we spoke to, we made a point of telling them we are a partnership. And eBay know this. eBay has all of our business details on file that we're trying to verify with paperwork infuriating. So in response to that, and I quote, um, the lady said, there is a knowledge gap, quote, about the difference between a company and a partnership. I mean, this is basic stuff, very basic stuff. And she went on to again apologise to us and explain that it seems like the customer service reps in our case just didn't know what they were doing. We went on to have a long conversation about how we feel that our experience in this matter is not unusual. Uh, she was saying that she's really sorry we experienced this, but this is not how eBay normally handle things. And we were saying, well, we've been here before several times. We've had written apologies from eBay before. We've had phone calls very similar to the one we've just had before. And we hear other people's experiences. Yeah. You, you explained, you, you shared with her a couple of stories that, that we'd heard, you know, throughout, well, from comments that you've had on social media, etc. Yeah. Actually, she did say that she'd not only seen the video, but looked through the comments. Um, it's well over a thousand comments now on the video. And some of those share other people's strikingly similar experiences with eBay customer services. So we tried very hard to impress on her that this, this is a problem that it feels like eBay is maybe unaware of and it's damaging. It's incredibly damaging. We love eBay and we told her such and we want to sell on eBay. We want eBay to be as good as it can be. And I still feel despite all of this, and this is exactly how I said it, Despite all of this, we still feel that eBay is the best place for our business. But we feel that eBay is blind to how damaging this stuff is. If you look through those thousand plus comments on the video, so many people are frustrated. Yeah, and a lot of people are leaving and they have no idea. They're not, you know, they have no knowledge of the fact that these people are leaving because they leave quietly. So they don't get that feedback of why they've left. It's a really good point. We, I've had lots of personal messages, private messages from people who abandoned eBay for similar experiences. eBay loses contact with those people because they're gone. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy to share some of those if people are happy for me to do so as we move forward with this conversation with eBay. Yeah. So in response to that, and I'll, I'll quote again, we're not going to put the audio in here of the conversation, but I can directly quote. So in response to us trying to get across how damaging this is and how common these experiences are from small businesses dealing with eBay, uh, she said, and I quote, that's very disappointing to hear, and this is not being taken lightly. So hopefully eBay are listening and eBay will maybe start to appreciate how damaging these experiences are. Yeah. 
She also said, there is an opportunity here for us as a company to get our policies and member experience better. Yeah, I mean, that's encouraging to hear, right? Yeah. So Also, should I just say that bit as well? Yeah. And she also said, your feedback is definitely being looked at. Great. <laughs> Although we have been here before, we've had a follow-up um, conversation like that before, we've had written apologies before, and it just feels like things aren't addressed. But I am an optimist, um, <laughs> so we shall see. We went on to arrange a, another follow-up call with uh, the general manager of eBay UK, which is coming up on Friday, um, where we will have the chance to explain to him exactly what we have said before about our specific experience and then the wider question of people's frustration as a small business working with eBay and how we feel sometimes that we there's very little empathy and there's very little help when you need it. That's how it feels and maybe eBay are not aware of that. We are happy to put that across. Um, I've written down here that we tried to express the feeling of the community, the wider feeling in the community that eBay does not care or empathise with small business experience. And that's what we're going to try and put across on Friday as well. And when we discuss this, I think this next line is worth quoting. Do you want to read what the lady said? Yeah. It says, it probably feels like the human factor is taken out. 100%. Definitely in our experience, when, when we were told two weeks in, maybe we'll get a human being to have a look at this for you now. I was gobsmacked yeah. at that point. So the, the, the human element was definitely taken out of our experience. And I know that a lot of people have said the same thing. Mm. They just feel like it's, you know, they're not getting a human communication with eBay anymore. And it's got worse, you know, recently. As, as technology progresses, the human contact and empathy and etc. yeah, is, is being removed. It was an encouraging conversation and she pointed out to us that her role is to try and improve customer service relations within eBay. So we were speaking to somebody that hopefully has some power and influence uh, within that, right? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. It goes back to being optimistic. <laughs> yeah. One thing we really wanted to ask was, how can we avoid this happening again? Well, the thing is, we... we Understand that from time to time, eBay has to verify who you are and your business. Yeah. How can we avoid getting into a two week ordeal? What should we do differently? Um, so she was helpful in that she, she listed the three documents that would have apparently cleared this all up and that's what was needed. But we're pretty sure we supplied two of those and it didn't help. So I, we're still a little bit in confusion about that, right? I'm really confused, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, yeah. So I wish we could say we know what to do next time. We're not really yeah. sure. We did ask which document made this go away, and that was very vague. Apparently, she's still looking through all of the phone calls. She's not actually allowed to look at the original documents for security reasons, I think. So it did get a bit vague here. And I'll be honest, if we were asked tomorrow to verify our account... I'm, I, I don't know if, we, if it would go the same way or not, which is, which is frustrating. We still. wouldn't be 100% confident that what we sent them would be okay. We went on to explain that there is a bigger picture here. Um, take our ordeal out of this. We try to impress very much that there is a, a feeling of dissatisfaction within the small business community, which, which we've been a part of now through YouTube, Instagram, and sharing what we do. We've become... Uh, a part of that community and we hear things all the time people share their stories with us and there's a general feeling that that ebay doesn't really care um i don't know if that is how ebay feel but that's the general feeling of dissatisfaction within the community and this is another conversation that we're going to have on friday as we move on and we left the conversation we were on the phone i don't know for half an hour or so we left it with um, I shared with her a comment that I can't remember whether it was on the video or if it was a private message. 
somebody shared with me, I think it's worth repeating, is that eBay demands from its sellers, small businesses, individuals, companies, all of us, that we provide the highest level of customer service. If we don't, they punish us with our metrics and, and they are on top of it all the time. When we need help from eBay, our example is a, is a perfect example of this. We needed to verify ourselves and we were struggling to do so. We needed help. We needed communication. Communication. That's the biggest thing. And service. And we didn't receive a high level of customer service. We received an appalling level of customer service and that has been admitted. eBay have admit, admitted the problem was theirs. What went on was due to their inadequacy in understanding and things. Knowledge gaps, is in quotes. Knowledge gaps, lack of clear communication. So we were given terrible communication, but I have no recourse with that. I can't change their metrics or, or whatever, right? It feels there's a huge imbalance and that's a massive part of the frustration. And we we talked about that. Yeah, because you do, I just, <laughs> I don't know if I should go into this, but you, you feel like almost like a naughty child, like your, yeah. your headmaster's telling you off and giving you lines, <laughs> you know, if you, if you miss replying to a request um, before the deadline or you know that kind of thing you get a black mark <laughs> yeah I, I I said as well we briefly touched on you know we see eBay spending millions on advertising trying to attract new users trying to attract new sellers new businesses I wish they would spend some time and money trying to keep the ones they have improve our feeling of being safe on that platform, being um, respected, being talked to as a like a business to a business, not being like a naughty child, like you said, <laughs> and being listened to. If they could improve that, a lot less businesses would leave the platform, I feel. That's what we tried to impress in, in that phone call. And we will tomorrow when we speak to this chap. What's his role? General manager of eBay. So that's a conversation we are going to have tomorrow. We will update you with the highlights of that one, um, hopefully at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Um, have you got anything else to say? It's worth saying, we, we love eBay. We, we've been running our business on eBay for 20 plus years. Yeah, we've been and loyal to eBay for 22 years. Yeah, we, we want to sell on eBay. If you read the, the comments on that, there's lots of people saying, leave eBay, you know, I left eBay years ago there, this, that and the other. I would like to carry on selling on eBay, but even we really questioned it during this two week period. Yeah. Um, and it's a shame, it's a real shame. Anyway, we will leave on a positive. We have a conversation to have tomorrow with somebody that hopefully is open to hearing and taking in what we have to offer as an experience. Hopefully something positive can come out of this. That's all we want, mm. to be listened to and maybe for policy or procedures to change. But we live in hope. At least some good training. <laughs> like, at least. <laughs> at least. If one thing comes out of this, that eBay understand the difference between a UK partnership and a company, that's a win. <laughs> right. Thank you for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, we will pop another video on here about some of our experience. Maybe not the recent one because we've been here before. We'll pop another one up there if you want to carry on watching. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye.